an artist and welcome back into our channel. I am the artist Theodora Agatha Leonti and I am a figure painter from Greece and in this video I'll be using Zen Art Supplies journal and I'm gonna show you how to sketch and uh, draw four different birds using watercolor and gouache. So let's go. Materials, Zen Art journal, an art miniature brushes set and black tulip set, jar of water palette, watercolors and gouache and of course paper towel. The first bird we are going to paint is called Kingfisher and we're starting with a thin uh, wash of uh, blue watercolor paint using the tan round brush from the black tulip. This brush has a nice pointy tip and it's very good for washes and can hold a lot of water. Next, but on our list is Fisher Taranko and it has this beautiful emerald shades. Using the same brush, I am starting my layers by um, adding this uh, sap green mixed with these uh, lemon uh, green and some olive green uh, at the head. Next bird is Kartikuba and has this beautiful um, rainbow colors and we start with this lime green. I find the pictures in pixabay.com and it's a royalty free site and you can find many um, many photos of birds and many other subsects. Next I've added some orange, added it's big and some pink and blue. And next we have crowned crane. And using again the same brush number 10 uh, from the black tulip set, I'm starting by adding uh, black. And there I made a small mistake, but it, it will be an easy fix. That's why you need to have the paper towel next to you. You will never know what, when it might come handy. This bird doesn't have as much color as the previous ones, it has mostly black and grey and some uh, spots of red and a little bit of uh, yellow ochre at the top of his head but it's still very beautiful and I like this uh, picture of them being a couple. The journal I'm using from Zen Art Supplies is uh, it has 106 pages and they are all thick, smooth and known blade. It is 120 uh, grams per square meter and uh, it's only best used uh, with uh, very thin uh, washes uh, because if you want to paint with watercolors you need at least 300 grams uh, but you can still paint with many mediums you can paint with inks uh, you can paint with watercolor with gouache uh, with acrylics uh, you can sketch with uh, pencils you can't just you know add many washes to it but still you know the this paper won't uh, bleed or recall or tear, which is pretty good. But just be careful with uh, the water, how much you want to use when I'm uh, working on your sketchbook. Now using the 5.0 uh, round brush from the miniature set, I'm painting uh, the beak. I've added a thin uh, layer of um, dark brown color and I'm just now adding um, a detail to the eyes. and some highlight around the eyes with uh, yellow ochre. Now I have switched to number six filbert brush. And with quick motions, I'm just um, painting with some uh, blue color and I'm adding even darkened shade of blue around the eyes to make them a bit more prominent. King Fisher, but has various shades of blue and has also some dots. So it's best to work from the lighter tone to the darker tone. I'm adding the white dots uh, using the uh, white gouache 
and usually if you want to add some white highlights to your watercolor paintings it's best to use white gloss instead of uh, white watercolors because white watercolors tend to um, not cover and they don't look white enough usually they're more grayish now I'm working to the area under uh, the eye I've added a thin uh, layer of um, yellow ochre and now with a smaller uh, brush with number five round brush I'm just uh, painting a few lines over my yellow ochre wash I've mixed uh, a little brown with uh, the yellow ochre to make them a bit darker and make it look more like uh, feathers and now with my flat brush from the miniature set and some darker blue I'm just working um, with uh, quick parallel lines one next to another to make this effect of feathers just pay attention to to the gesture now I continue with the yellow ochre I'm just adding it uh, whatever um, I say it exists on the bird using my number six uh, flat brush from the miniature set and um, this is a very useful brush if you want to paint uh, lines now I'm just remixing uh, my two blues one that is a bit deeper and richer and one that is a bit lighter I made the lighter stone by adding a little white to my deeper blue tone And with my number six flat brush from the fine line miniature set, I'm adding first uh, a few lines uh, from the lighter blue, and then I'm working on top of that, adding a few darker uh, values. And as you can see, I am doing the same thing with its other wing. noticed that it has different blue shade at its tail more of a turquoise blue so I am mixing it and applying it at the same manner as I did for the wings when painting birds it's important to work on your strokes in order to duplicate a texture have you ever seen a kingfisher bird in person if you have tell me in the comments Apparently there are 90 to 160 different kingfisher species. If you love painting birds, there is another step-by-step -step video on how to paint birds on our channel and there is also a video on how to paint feathers. For more depth and dimension, I'm adding a few more dark lines to the bird's feathers. Dark values are very important because they give uh, dimension, but uh, be careful not to add a lot of water because that would make it uh, look a little muddy and don't overdo it. You should let a few of the other colored feathers show through. Moving on to our next bird, the Sertranko, that is this beautiful emerald green bird. I'm continuing with the same brush from before, number six flat brush from the fine line miniature set. Honestly, I feel like this brush was my go-to for painting birds. I'm just uh, adding a thin wash um, with minimum water. Now with my number one round brush, from the final light miniature set, I'm working on the little details at its beak and I'm adding the darker values uh, where they are necessary. 
now I'm letting the bake dry and I am starting to work on the eyes I'm starting with a relatively light brown uh, tone and later from that I am adding small uh, black details uh, for the irises just to make them look a little more realistic and not flat the number two flat brush from the miniature set is ideal for adding tiny details like the ones I'm adding now to the eyes if you like painting birds there is another video on our channel where I show you how to paint a golden fence with watercolors and there is another video also on our channel where I show you how to paint feathers Now I'm just painting the small red dots uh, on the eye of the bird and the small reflections it has in its eyes. It is important to paint attention to detail because that's how you achieve a more realistic result. And also that way you make sure that you've captured the likeness of any uh, object or person or animal you paint sometimes you might not find the exact color you might need in your watercolor palette and it's good to know color theory and know how to mix colors like for instance it's good to know that when you mix blue and red you get purple so that you know um, how to get the exact state of purple you need if you add more blue and less red you get a more dark purple and if you add more red than blue you get a different type of purple and if you add a little bit of white it becomes much lighter and more lilac now with the number one flat brush I am adding a few strokes, a few light strokes of a deeper green and then a lighter green just to make this more ombre effect and give the impression of its individual feather. You can obviously use this technique uh, to every um, bird you paint because that will give you more illustrative impression of uh, feathers and it's quite easy to do now once again I'm going over the sketch with a few more strokes of darker color to give uh, depth whenever it is needed And also with some white ink or gouache or watercolor you can add a few highlights to give the impression that either the feathers are reflecting light or they are lighter in some areas. Now again with the number one flat brush I'm just um, filling a few spaces that seem a little bit empty and I'm also adding a small uh, layer of uh, emerald green to make the feathers look more full and blend all those brush strokes together. You can add as many brush strokes uh, and layers as you need in order to be uh, pleased with the final original just don't overdo it so 
the Carta Cuba bird has so many rainbow colors uh, that also remind me of cotton candy because it's very fluffy so I've started by laying down um, where its color should be and now with the number five round brush I'm starting from the eyes it has very light blue eyes to make the eyes more realistic you need to add reflection and a darker color around the irises Now that I'm pleased with the eye, I'm just moving on to adding the brush strokes that will give the impression of feathers. And I'm doing that with number one angled brush. And I'm starting by uh, laying the darker color on top. And as I move down, I'm just adding the layers of lighter feathers. The number one angled brush is ideal for painting grass and generally painting straight lines Now with some white watercolour I'm adding a few lighter feathers and I will add more layers of white feathers uh, when it dries because in that area the pink is barely noticeable. I'll leave a lot of the white of the paper at the stomach of the bird because in that area uh, it is white so I don't have to cover it. And now I am moving to the last bird that is a crowned crane and it's also my favorite because um, there are two birds having their heads together and they form this heart kind of shape and it's really nice also that bird doesn't have many colors it's mostly gray and black and has a few uh, red marks at some places so once again I'm starting from the eyes that are a pale gray and around the eyes they have this black marks so they make the pale grey eyes really pop you see the eyes already look so realistic and interesting Their head on top is like black, doesn't have much texture. But I'm just adding a little bit of reflection with some white watercolor. The beak is also pretty dark, but it's not black, it's a uh, dark gray. Just make sure not to cover the whole beak, just to leave a small line in between to suggest that that's where the beak separates 
if you don't do that don't worry you can um, paint the line in with some white watercolor or gouache The first bird's head and beak is a bit lighter because um, it gets more light in the position it stands. So basically now with a number one flat brush from the miniature set from Zen Art Supplies I'm just um, adding small details of on the beak. I'm just adding some reflections and some shadows just to make it look more realistic and more three-dimensional. And I do that by observing my reference photo quite a lot to see all these light spots and dark spots. So it's good to always paint from a reference if you want the result to be more realistic and more detailed. And it's always good to pick a reference that isn't very that has good lighting in the sense that it has enough shadows and enough uh, light spots that it's not overly exposed to to light because that way it doesn't have much contrast and therefore you don't have much to work with and usually beginners tend to pick photos that are overly exposed to light because there are not more shadows and they think that it's going to be easier but in reality this is not going to help you learn or it's also is not going to help you with a result. Now that I've added most of the details to the head because we still have this uh, thing that is like a fan above the head, I'm just leaving it for last. I move to the body of the birds and I'm adding the, um, the feathery effect that I told you about. I'm just adding some medium great tone first. For this bed's feathers I'm using the number 10 round full square brush from the black tulip set and the number one ringer brush from the miniature set. So as you can see I first uh, have this base of a mid-zone grey and then on top I'm laying uh, a few darker brush strokes. Thank you. 
and then when they're going to dry I'm just gonna add a few white uh, stripes And now it's my favorite part with the number 10 round full score brush I'm just uh, adding the strikes above the head with some uh, yellow ochre and I think they look really fun and gives the bird a dash of color in it And then I'm just adding a few more layers of color to make it more dimensional. So that was today's video. I hope you find it interesting and I hope you find many useful tips and advice. And I'm always very curious to see your own work. So don't forget to tag Zenart Supplies on Instagram. And I'm gonna see you at the next video. Bye.